welcome you at this online summit. And we have here many registered participants from different groups, potential and former fellows, former and future hosts, ambassadors of the program implemented team. So we plan a short presentation to go straight forward and also to allow time for questions from different groups. So after the opening, and Christina, maybe you can share the agenda on the next slides. Okay. After the opening, we will have different consecutive sessions about the program, about open calls to select fellows. We'll have feedback from the hosts, feedback from previous fellows who will share hints, lesson learned. So also uh, we will have a session about the bootcamp and other absolutely exciting opportunity we offer to the fellow, to the fellows and why not to the hosts. We also will session NGI, so Next Generation Internet for Ukraine, where our Ukrainian partners will share main challenges and opportunity for NGI in Ukraine and other thoughts, suggestions to encourage applicants to take this dimension into account. And we welcome all our Ukrainian participants and we stand with you. At the end, there will be three parallel rooms on Teams to allow you an opportunity to ask questions or to share your suggestion in a smaller group around specific topics. Christina will explain it later. So what we all wanted here during this summit, it is not also to share with you all the great benefits of the program, but we also want to hear your ideas, your suggestions, wishes, for example, in the support activity, in boot camps, in training, in everything else. And we will do our best to take them into account. So you can consider that there is a program NGI Enrichers, the project of the European Commission, which is actually the Transatlantic Fellowship Program. But the details, the smaller elements, we can co-create them together. So welcome to benefits and welcome to this event. And Christina, so who is NGN Richard Manager, will explain you very briefly a few technical modalities about today's event. So Christina, please. Thank you, Svetlana. Yes, yeah, so just to add uh, to what Svetlana said. So at the, each, uh, at the end of each session that we will be holding, um, there will be five, 10 minutes for interactive question and answer and suggestions. So um, during the summit itself, you, you cannot uh, enable your microphone, but you can type your questions in the question and answer chat box. And uh, on the other hand, um, in the breakout rooms that will be starting at 5.30 uh, Central European time, uh, you will be able to also speak up and use your microphone and ask questions. And as Svetlana said, also share your ideas with us and make suggestions. So for the breakout rooms, uh, we will share actually three different Teams link uh, and based on your interest and your profile, uh, you will choose the, the, um, the room that you would like to join. Uh, we will share these links in the um, discussion box, but also we send them already to you in the Eventbrite reminder email. So you should also have them already in your emails. So um, yes, these are just some uh, technical things. So uh, I will hand over the word back to Svetlana who will, uh, <laughs> who will continue. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Christina. Can you put the slides with the first page of the agenda? Many thanks. Okay. Yeah. Uh, where is this opening? Yeah, absolutely. Very good. So our first speaker, actually was supposed to be Dr. Fabrizio Sestini, who is Senior Ex Expert Digital Social Innovation Unit Next Generation Internet of the European Commission. So Fabrizio also follows NGI Enrichers program. But unfortunately, Dr. Sestini is sick and he's here with us, but he lost his voice. 
since this morning. So it's he cannot talk without voice. But Fabrizio, so thank you very much for being with us in spite of your sickness and without voice. And I will share a short statement. I will read a short statement which you sent me this morning when, yeah, when you realize that uh, it's it's uh, not possible to talk. Okay, so I, I'll read you a, a short welcome from Dr. Fabrizio Sistini. So I believe that this is a very strategic project for the next generation internet vision, which is being developed by the European Commission. As you know, this vision is fully in line with the recent European declaration on digital rights and principles. And it is based on the same value, putting people at the center, promoting solidarity, promoting inclusion, guaranteeing freedom of choice to citizens, encouraging participation in democratic life, increasing safety and security, and contributing to sustainability. This human-centric, transparent, and participatory vision of next-generation internet is all the more important at the international level in these times, also to reduce tensions and promote dialogue and cooperation in more diverse constitutions. Diversity is key to innovation, both at technological and at social level. Diversity among nationalities, among continents, and also among disciplines. Indeed, the ability to master the multiple natural and humanistic discipline which are needed to fully understand the internet is a key requirement for this project, Next Generation Internet as the foundation to make the NGI vision a reality. And this diversity will thrive on the universal heritage made of what we call digital commons, open source, open hardware, open standards, and open innovation, which will not only benefit inclusion, but also increase resilience in the face of commercial and political pressure, which are unfortunately more and more influencing internet developments. Finally, I wish to congratulate the organizer of this event and to thank all of you participants for your interest and your time. Have a very productive day. Thank you very much, Fabricio, for being with us in spite of uh, everything. And uh, I'm sure there will be other events uh, where you will share your great insights. And then I'm leaving, giving the floor to the welcome from the US by Dr. Stefano Lamy. Stefano is Chief Operation Officer of Superconducting Quantum Materials and Systems Center, led by Fermi National Accelerator Laboratory, called Fermilab, from the United States. And Fermilab is partner of NGI Enrichers. So please, Stefano. Thank you very much, uh, Svetlana. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, good morning to uh, my colleague and uh, friends in North America, and greetings from the windy, uh, windy Chicago land where it's actually still uh, early morning. So uh, I'm very glad and honored to participate in this uh, webinar about the Horizon Euro program and Giant Richards, a program funded by the European Commission for the mobility of young researchers to, uh, uh, from Europe in uh, North America. And I would like, first of all, to thank all the organizers uh, for this opportunity. So, uh, Svetlana already explained, my name is Sifa Lami. I'm the Chief Operating Officer uh, of the SQMS Center, a, a acronym for a complicated name, Superconducting uh, Quantum Materials and Systems, a Fermilab. 
And this is a center of quantum computing and quantum materials for computing, and not only, uh, funded by the US Department of Energy follow, following the uh, White House uh, Quantum Initiative recommendation. So this center, this center, uh, my center, co-applied in the uh, next generation of internet and research as partner and hosting member. I believe uh, this is a very important program which uh, will serve as a benchmark and a sample for the uh, mobility of innovators, researchers, scientists between the two continents, uh, bridging United States and Europe uh, through science. So if, if uh, technology innovation is crucial to every country economy because it's created the condition to enhance growth, NGI is definitely covering many hot topics of the future society and quality of life, merging computing engineering with digital economy and social issues. So we know that Europe and the United States share the same values, which are deeply rooted in our long-standing friendship alliance. And let me highlight here that science and research have been major drivers to forging this uh, extraordinary bond and we centrally continue to nurture it. I believe that uh, this uh, consortium created under the HGI and Richards program will help to create more opportunities uh, of innovative research collaboration through effective networking between European and American scholars and institutions. Finally, as a European scientist working here in the United States, let me spend a few words to honor, celebrate the role and contribution of European researchers and scientists living and working in North America. The National Science Foundation, for instance, estimates there are hundreds of thousands of European researchers in the US working in federal agencies, private research institutes, and universities. They are a unique asset and form a veritable bridge between countries. Their passion, hard work, and commitment contribute daily to help science advance and strengthen the ties between our scientific communities. So it is, it is just amazing to see how much respect, appreciation, and esteem they gather uh, everywhere in this continent. Their personal engagement is a true source of uh, inspiration. So uh, let me conclude by saying that the NGI uh, and Richard program will help bringing us even closer by gathering scientists, uh, innovators, researchers from both sides of the ocean in our common goal uh, of promoting peace and security worldwide, which uh, especially you know, in this day and age depend on science as much as uh, diplomacy. So thank you again very much and I hope you very insightful uh, workshop. Thank you very much, Dr. Lamy. Great. And uh, now I would like to welcome uh, uh, words from Canada by Bernard Duval from MyTax. So I'm sure you know MyTax, but just in case, it's a nonprofit national research organization that, in partnership with Canadian academia, private industry, and government, operates research and training programs, but I'm sure, yeah, related to industrial, social innovation. My tax is partner of NGI and Richer, and I'm sure Bernard will explain much more. Welcome, Bernard, and the floor is yours. Thank you, uh, Slevana. Very nice to uh, get your introduction. So, um, hi, everyone. Stefano, I'm very happy about your presentation because you might recognize yourself and what I will show in the next uh, few minutes. Um, but first of all, uh, nice to meet everyone uh, on this uh, call today. 
Uh, I will say a few words in French for our French uh, friends, but my presentation uh, will be uh, in English. All right. Uh, Slevania, can you confirm if my uh, sharing is is working? Do you see my screen or not? I see your screen, but I see your email. Okay. Not the presentation. Uh, that's not the goal. Let me redo <laughs> this. All right. It's coming. Yes, we can see it now. Perfect. No, not in full screen yet, but yes, we can see it. Yeah. Perfect. Now perfect. All right. Thank you. So if you, I will say a few words in French, uh, then I will get back in English. Alors à tous uh, tous nos amis uh, francophones, uh, je vais faire la présentation uh, uh, en anglais, mais je voulais juste vous dire que ça me fait vraiment plaisir là, de, de participer uh, au projet uh, NGI. Uh, le Canada, MITAX, uh, est très heureux d'en faire partie. Si vous avez des questions, vous voulez discuter en français, uh, n'hésitez pas à me contacter uh, après. Ça me fera bien plaisir là, de vous donner plus de détails sur ce qui va être uh, présenté. So, it's done. The French part is done. Uh, hi, everyone. Very happy to be here. Um, so, um, what I said is our French uh, friends, if they want to call me, have more details about the presentation, they can feel free to, to do so. Uh, so, what I'll do in the next few minutes is to uh, show you a bit about my tax. But the goal here is each uh, slide you'll see, imagine an opportunity of collaboration between uh, NGI uh, members. So, that would be between uh, Europe, uh, Horizon members, and the US um, as well. Um, so, my name is Bernard Duval. Uh, I'm senior advisor. Uh, I'm part of the MyTax Future Networks uh, team. And what we do uh, within that team is we promote 5G, NextG, and all the good stuff that NGI is promoting. So, that's why I was very uh, excited to uh, accept the uh, invitation. So my tax is a not-for-profit. Our purpose um, is to empower Cana the Canadian innovation uh, through partnerships, partnership between um, academia and industry. So imagine one research project where my tax is funding uh, internships between a company and universities. That's the basic of what we do. Uh, we deliver solutions to our most pressing problems of the society. We drive economic growth, productivity, and meaningful, that's very important, meaningful change to improve quality of life for all Canadians. Our mission is to catalyze forces in the Canadian innovation ecosystem, and that's what we intend to do with NGI, uh, leverage that ecosystem in Canada to work along with uh, other part of the world. Uh, we will build a world-class diverse community of innovators uh, through our collaborative model, attracting and deploying top talent to industry uh, and matching need with expertise to create ambitious solutions to real world uh, challenges. And our vision is very simple. Canadian innovation will create change that transforms the world, but that can only be done through collaboration. So that's why being part of NGI is great. Uh, so my tax is a not-for-profit. We always thanks our funding partners. We're, so we're independent, but totally funded by Canada government and all province and the territory of Yukon. That's where we get uh, our money to uh, funds our, uh, fund our programs. So as I said, you can, uh, through the information I give you, you can uh, maybe identify opportunities. Uh, of collaboration. So since 2008, my tax funded seven, 77, uh, 77,000 internships, um, 17 only last year. So my tax is, is booming, is growing rapidly. Um, we have more, we work with more than 12,000 researchers through 81 universities all across Canada. Um, we also work with 100, more than 100 post-secondary partners in Canada. Um, we also work with 8,000 industry partner organizations. I will give you a few examples uh, later, but those are the companies, but also not for profit. And lately, uh, Canada is also funding research projects with municipalities, cities, 
and uh, hospitals. So in the last two years, I, if I can, uh, if I remember well. So for the last 10 years, uh, it's 35,000 plus research projects that were conducted using my tax funding and uh, about $800 million uh, invested. But it's not all. In the next five years, we secured $1 billion of uh, funding to, uh, to conduct more research projects, to uh, help more um, uh, interns to develop their expertise. And that will include, of course, the next generation internet uh, sector. So we have agreement with 52 international partners in 25 countries. So it's growing. Uh, if your name is not there, if your country is not there, well, we need to talk and make sure it appears on it. So those are the countries we have the most uh, initiatives uh, with. Um, so academic partners, so we have two, uh, two pillars, right? The academic partners and the industry. And our role is to match them. So we have employees uh, within most research office of all universities across Canada. So that means one or more employees of my tax are working directly with uh, research uh, offices within all these universities. So what we like to say is uh, to industry uh, or international partners. So if you, if you look for Canada's top cybersecurity researchers, we can help. 5G, 6G, next G researchers, we can help as well. Same for AI, quantum. Um, so Stefano, quantum, maybe we should talk. Uh, Web 3.0, uh, grid, multi-cloud, edge AI uh, researchers as well. So that's for universities, but also uh, undergrad colleges, technical um, research facilities. Now, I said we were matching uh, industry and um, and universities. So th those are just some of the uh, enterprise we work uh, with. So I use big names because everybody knows the VM VMware, uh, Sienna, Ericsson, uh, IBM, Nokia, Samsung. So we conduct research projects with them. Reality is that in Canada, uh, the economy is based on uh, SMEs. So small businesses, medium-sized businesses and startups. So I use big names, uh, but really there's an ecosystem where everybody is working together. And that's more true in technology uh, because one person, one company cannot do it, uh, everything on his own. Okay, so international collaboration, it's a must. Uh, a few words on opportunities. So, uh, so the roadmap for collaboration, in our opinion, uh, between the you know, European uh, Union, US, and Canada. Uh, first, well, digital transformation is a top priority for many countries. So it is true for Canada. So many uh, initiatives across the country uh, are ongoing, and international collaboration is key uh, to succeed. We're also working on a quantum loop or a test bed, if you like. So there's a communication uh, quantum uh, test bed being built right now in Quebec. It will be connected all across Canada, and we're looking for opportunities to connect with the U.S. and uh, and Europe or Horizon members. So that's very exciting, very interesting. There is also SING's 6G Canada initiative, uh, where we're seeking collaboration with the European Union, Horizon, and USA, uh, the U.S. as well. Uh, so that's very interesting. So that includes um, uh, research, a roadmap for the next five to 10 years, but also a test bed to conduct a research in a real environment. Um, also, we're working with uh, IEEE on the CTU Connect the Unconnected initiative. So you might or might not know, uh, but MyTAC started that collaboration last year. And the goal is really to provide more funding to uh, to young researchers who actually are creating invention to help uh, the world and connect those without access to technology. And we do all that by promoting mobility. So through NGI, we want to uh, connect Canadian ecosystems with NGI members, uh, connect talent, talent uh, connect infrastructure as well. So if we want our talent and our researchers to uh, conduct their research, we need to uh, leverage all the research centers and the test bed that are available 
through the NGI uh, ecosystem. Uh, one quick example. So right now we're leading, uh, we're co-leading actually a very interesting initiative. It's called Edge AI. It's a next-gen health uh, initiative. And the goal is to help um, uh, blind people or people with, who are vision, uh, vision impaired to develop technology to help them. So I'm wearing glasses uh, and that will apply to everybody who might in the next few years as we uh, get older, uh, will have problem with vision. So we want to uh, develop international collaboration and leverage AI um, uh, strength in Canada, but everyone uh, to come and conduct research. And we believe NGI is a great uh, platform uh, to do so. So my tax Canada is very enthusiastic about NGI collaboration. It's just starting this year, but we have big, um, uh, a nice vision and big ambition uh, for that. So all the names, uh, all the company names, um, university names, um, uh, streams of research I mentioned. If you uh, feel you connect with that, uh, let's let's discuss and see what we can do uh, within. Uh, the NGI uh, program. So thank you, everybody. Um, uh, and let's uh, continue this great uh, summit. Merci beaucoup. Merci, Bernard. Thank you very much. So we then yeah, so closed our opening remark. And then I switch the moderator role to Christina. Well, yeah, mm -hmm. Christina, if you can also run the you the slides if you wish I mean, yes thank you very much and very actually good. so yeah. it will be Svetlana now who will continue yeah, yeah. presenting the overview for the project so I'm just going to share yeah. the slides very good Oh, yes. Okay. Thank, thank you very much, Christina. Okay. I'll maybe go a little bit quicker than I planned because uh, there were already uh, a number of uh, main messages in Fabrizio Sistini uh, welcome words. So, but I wanted to present you a bit of a route. So maybe remind you roots of the, the NJ Enrichers mm -hmm. Transatlantic Fellowship Program. So the Actually, uh, Europe, uh, well, okay, Next Generation Internet is a European Commission initiative that aims to shape the development evolution of the internet into the internet of human, responding to people's fundamental needs. So initial European investment uh, in NJ research innovation uh, was, uh, I think, uh, 250 million uh, during the uh, 2018-2020, and it's already supported uh, more than 1,000 internet research innovators and hundreds of projects related to next generation internet. But this is not only about research, and I'm just giving you the old numbers, okay, I don't have very recent numbers, but so this support is not only financial, it is support in mentoring and in the journey from an idea to a real business. So you can go to the website of the initiative and you will see that there are plenty of uh, innovators uh, there and solutions and different topics and in a very broad range of subjects, including finance and application and yeah, different domains. So it's just very briefly about the NGI initiative of the European Union. Next slide, please. And this is also, next slide, please. Yeah, okay. And this is also, no, no, previous one. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, Christy. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And this is actually, this doesn't come out of the uh, blue. It's related to different international initiatives. Uh, for example, there is a declaration for the future of the internet which was proposed by the European Union, the United States, and several international partners. And it set out the vision and principle of a trusted internet. And there are 
I think now it's about more than 60 countries signed this declaration, including all European member states, US and Canada, and many other countries. Next slide, please. So these are somehow the roots of the NGI in Richards Transatlantic Fellowship Program. This is a European gateway for human-centric internet researchers and innovators to the US and to Canada. So what's the goal actually of the program? The goal is in, in a very simple words, it's of course to enhance cooperation in the development of technology, standards, solutions, services uh, in related to next generation internet and to you know, reinforce this transatlantic ecosystem. Uh, this program, NJ Enrichers, started in September and will run for three years. But it is built on the previous program, which was called NGI Explorers, and which was a pro program just before NJ Enrichers with focus on the United States. So here in NJ Enrichers, we have a focus on US and Canada as well. And uh, we, we are continuing the efforts built by this previous program. We even use very similar wording, okay? Just to also to show the, the continuity of this. Next slide, please. What is interesting is that the, if we talk about topics, it's very broad. Next generation internet and and this was also mentioned in the welcome words from Fabrizio Sizzini from the European Commission. So it's very broad because we talk about human-centric internet values, data protection, data sovereignty, interoperability, autonomy, privacy. We talk about focus area, key enabling technologies. We talk about artificial intelligence, internet of things, 6G, 5G, cybersecurity, quantum boom, virtual reality, and many other elements. We talk about very different application domains because this is relevant for environment, for health, like Bernard presented right now, okay, for democracy, for transport, for digitalization of industry and for many other topics. So all this is included in our transatlantic fellowship program, but not only this. Next slide, please. Because if we talk about human-centric internet, we also talk about human science, social science and humanities. And NGI is multidisciplinary. So there is important contribution from social science and humanity, from art, from design, from economics, from sociology, from psychology, from different topics. Of course, this so specialist uh, means those specialists who are able to contribute to the next generation internet developments from this point of view. But this is very important dimension. And in NJ Enrichers, each time we open the call, we present the topics, we say it is not about internet per se infrastructure, it is about broad understanding of next generation internet. By the way, in the US, there is completely different understanding and it, it was interesting when I talk with US people and they see it completely differently, okay, with, with of course similar keywords, but not at all in such a broad way. So this is more, I would say, philosophical concept with social innovation and many other things. Next slide, please. So if we talk now about NJ Enrichers, uh, it's maybe not a great representation because it's linear, but because it's NJ Enrichers, it's not linear, but it helps to pass the message. So what we do, we select, reinforce, fund, connect, and promote next generation internet researchers and innovators. And now, Christine, if you can, yeah, 
we're on the next slide. So I'll try to go very quickly by each of these sports. Why I say quickly? Because you will have other slots in the agenda where our leaders responsible for this topic will present you a little bit more and will engage panelists. So what means select? Select means that we are opening different calls. We have different tracks for applications. The calls are competitive. So we have the call for parenting where the applicant and host identified each other. And this call is now running, it is open. And we will have other calls opening in January and then every year. And we encourage the use and opportunity for NGI technology for Ukraine, not only for Ukrainian participants, of course, they're welcome, but also for others to develop, to propose NGI technologies, which are useful for Ukraine and of course for other countries. Next slide, please. So once we select these people, we reinforce them. The reinforce meaning that we have boot camps with practitioners, with, with very hot topics. If you wish to have other topics, give feedback to the colleagues who will present this lot. It's about on-demand mentorship. It's about business, technical, and other support services. It's about a series of webinars where we want to, to highlight different people, different topics, technical and not technical. So all of you fellows who are selected, but also other colleagues, ambassadors, you know, hosts, will have an opportunity to talk. And it's also about community platform. Uh, connecting all these people. Next slide, please. So once they are selected and started, reinforcement comes throughout the whole program, but let's say when reinforcement starts, then there is funding. So this, so all selected fellows will get funding according to their proposals. So these are not only researchers, these are also innovators, and this is very important. Okay, and also I want to highlight, of course, this is, it is great to have young researchers, but we are not limited only to young researchers. So it's for everyone. Okay, it's, it's really the most open program I have seen personally. So it's this NGI researchers and innovators of different backgrounds and different uh, experience will travel for a certain period between three or six months to US and Canada and to collaborate with their host. NJ and Richards doesn't pay salary. NJ and Richards sponsors travels, fellowship, and subsistence with the numbers which you can see on these slides. This includes uh, non immigrant visa, support, you know, like insurance uh, uh, coverage for travel, or accident insurance, and uh, travel for training, and so on. Next slide, please. So that's about funding, but then we have connection and connection it is about, uh, so hosting of fellows by US and Canadian organizations. And again, this is completely open as far as they are NGI relevant and the topics are NGI relevant. It could be university, it could be federal laboratory, research center, private field, startups, NGOs. So as far as there is joint development of innovating NGI solutions. For some joint, it's, it's maybe, yeah, sometimes could be understood differently. Of course, when the private firm hosts the fellow, it will be the challenge provided by the firm, but still it is development of NGI solutions. And services, when we want to have impactful results or pass to the impact results from this program. And the goal is indeed to expand the community of NGI colleagues and to promote the fellows and their host and the NGI. Next one, please. So I'll not stop here on these slides because we have a, a special slot for this. We have great benefits for hosts. Uh, it's no cost for the host to those who are hosting the fellows. Uh, we have uh, really facilitated uh, time for the host, potential host, to pre-select those 
people according to their interests, according to their according to the host ideal criteria, and then the host will have interviews with them, okay, to 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 select the best one. So we try to facilitate everything to the host, and especially also for startups, it's really we, we few hours to go through the selection process because NJ enriches transatlantic fellow programs program take care of all this. Next slide, please. They are very different ways of involvement in NJ enrichers. You could be an applicant and future fellow. You could be a host in the US. You could be a host in Canada. You can be an ambassador of the program. You can be evaluator. So there are webinar presenter, you know, like really very different uh, ways of involvement. So there is a place for everyone. Next slide, please. And I wanted to highlight here that there is actually a, a, a separate initiative, which is very much connected uh, to NJ Enrichers. It's called Enriching the USA. It's a global collaborative initiative also funded by the European Commission, which offer additional support uh, for those Europeans who want to expand to, to the US while, of course, being in, in, in Europe as well. So it's soft lending hubs uh, with different industry specializations. So you see support of NGA enrichers. It doesn't stop with the program uh, funding. You know? Like it's, it's much beyond, it's much more than this. So there is a great, you know, information services, uh, matchmaking, advice, coaching, acceleration, uh, plenty of things which are complementary to NG enrichers. By saying this, I just encourage everyone to look also on the landscape of collaboration between Europe and the US. And this is a great example, NG um, enriching the USA, funded by the European Commission. This is a great example of a complementary program which might be of great interest for people. Next one, please. We are guided by our advisory board. Advisory board is from uh, different countries. And we have on these slides, Dr. Tariq Samad from uh, University of Minnesota, Technological Leadership Institute. We have Martina Dosoli who worked a lot with Canada. Now she's director of European Network of Living Labs in Belgium. We have a, a deputy head uh, from um, the Center of Fermi Lab. We have Monique, uh, so Silvia Zorzetti. We have Monique Moreau, who is a senior and distinguished architect for emergent technologies. And she is an ex Cisco and plenty of uh, track records. And we also have Professor Masoud Amin, who, uh, who is professor, but he is on leave for some long time at Quanta Technology in the US. So he's leading industry advisor. So he is connecting with the industry uh, and with a great network. And we have one Canadian advisor board, board member in process uh, by my text, but uh, will, I guess, be added next month or, or maybe in one month. So, and just final words. So in NGA Enrichers uh, has an implementing consortium behind it because it is actually a project funded by the European Commission, but the project is a program which is called NGA Enrichers. And uh, you have here uh, many organizations, uh, uh, I already mentioned Fermilab, we have Temple University, we have Mcura from the US, MyTax, of course, Enrich Global International Association. We have uh, two Ukrainian uh, partners, uh, iSolutions Lab uh, and Agency of European Innovations, who provide great support. And these are our long-term partners since many years. We have SPI, European American Enterprise Council, APRE from Italy, your relations from Switzerland with additional Swiss funding provided for Swiss colleagues. So you see, we already, it was your relations mobilized Swiss funding to bring additional uh, national initiatives to, to this. So I hope I, I didn't, uh, yeah, and our GST group, we are the coordinator. So just to say that behind there are people and they're also former fellows. So it's, it's, it's a really a brainstorming very regularly on many dimensions in this project. And we want to make it tailor it for you. Next one, please. And just to conclude, 
I just want to right. highlight that we have website, which is regularly updated. We started very recently. We go in parallel in different dimensions. So most informational is now already on the website. There will be additional elements like search for hosts and so on. So please look at this website. And, and if you and we, we have a very interesting frequently asked questions, plenty of questions. We answer each question and we publish the answer to each question. So you can find many of answers to your questions there. And also we have a YouTube channel. Uh, so it's indicated on the website and we have short interviews uh, with different people starting from uh, already as well, like several very short interviews, three, five minutes around special topics. So if you plan to apply, we highly recommend you to look at these videos because there are many explanations about you know, what is expected from this program. Uh, so that is just a recommendation, a hint for those who will apply. Well, thank you very much. I'm hopefully just in time. And now I would invite the implementing team to take care of their slots. And I would like to invite Christina to take the moderation of the whole event. Uh, and uh, yeah, the first one will be SPI and uh, Francisco. Yeah, right. sorry. Christina, I leave you to moderate because yeah, I don't have you. slides. Of course, you. I know Francisco. Thank okay. You. Thank you. So, yeah, the, <laughs> thank you very much, Svetlana, for this introduction and overview of the project. So, actually, now we will have um, uh, our partner, APRE, so the Agency for the Promotion of European Research from Italy, who is leading the open calls uh, for the project. So, I invite uh, Mattia. Uh, Keraci to give an overview on the open calls. Please, Mattia, the floor is yours. Hello, hello, Christina, hello, Svetlana, hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> okay, hear perfect. Yeah, I, I will uh, extend the presentation. So I think should be should be fine now. Please let me know. Yes, we can see it. Thank you. Okay, okay. Uh, so, uh, hello everybody, just like a couple of words about APRE, APRE is the Italian Agency for the Promotion of European Research, uh, and uh, our mission is uh, to support the Italian uh, uh, participation to uh, the Horizon uh, program, so we facilitate uh, the uh, explanation and the success uh, of uh, Italian uh, universities, uh, research centers and companies uh, in accessing the research and innovation funding of the European Union. Um, so, uh, I mean, Svetlana said just, uh, I mean, just a couple of minutes ago, uh, and uh, a general overview of, uh, of, of open calls. Uh, so I, I, I would like to, uh, to give you, especially to the uh, interested uh, applicants that are um, looking for uh, uh, the opportunities provided by NGI and researchers uh, to give maybe some more information about uh, the deadlines, uh, about the uh, criteria, about the benefits. Uh, but I mean, we will uh, we will go and we will go through the presentation uh, and uh, and uh, and show you what uh, maybe is interesting for uh, for you now. I mean, there are also information that are useful for those organizations. So this is important to understand that uh, I mean. In certain way, also organizations that will be the future hosts for uh, uh, for the program can be interested in uh, in uh, the, the the time the timeline and the uh, features of uh, of the of the calls. Um, okay. Uh, so, I mean, Svetlana said about, uh, about the requirements, I just want to, to stress that, uh, uh, that applicants uh, should be uh, basically residents, uh, taxpayers in one EU member states or Horizon Europe Pacific country or uh, in Switzerland, you will find, uh, I mean, there is uh, the guide for applicants that is uh, on uh, on uh, on our website, and you would find all the information about these uh, and also the 
the list of, uh, of Horizon Europe uh, ASEAN countries. Uh, and uh, I mean, what, uh, what we said about uh, the requirements is this basically, and uh, there should be a, uh, or a sort of uh, employment by legal entity in Europe. That means, uh, uh, I mean, when I say Europe, I say the member states, Horizon Europe ASEAN countries or Switzerland, or uh, self-employment. So it should be, uh, you should be as future applicants, taxpayers uh, in uh, in those uh, in those countries. And then, I mean, the other uh, features that uh, that Svetlana already uh, already mentioned. What we will be doing by this program, uh, this also was uh, was said. I mean, I just want to uh, to to stress maybe that uh, which are the benefits again. Uh, travel travel funding and visa uh, costs uh, uh, reimbursement are provided by the program. This is important. So travel funding and visa, uh, monthly and some allowance on the top of your salary. So three thousand and eighty uh, euros per month, uh, both in the US and in Canada. So it's uh, the same amount. Uh, and uh, so this is uh, basically the package of uh, uh, in terms of uh, monetary benefits. You will be uh, you you can use. To go in the US uh, or in Canada. And a, and a package and a, a range of further activities that will be explained uh, afterwards. Uh, also, this was presented before. We have uh, we will have uh, three calls in the next three years. Uh, I mean, one is uh, is is happening now, and each of these calls, each of these three calls uh, uh, has uh, three different tracks. Uh, pair teams, uh, challenges, and open ideas. Uh, three different way of uh, having these uh, these fellowships and go to the US uh, or uh, to Canada. Uh, before going in detail uh, in each uh, in each uh, uh, tracks track, I want to just like I mean everything you need to know to apply is on our website. Uh, application documents. We try to simplify as much as we could the documents, so you will have a guide for applicants. Uh, it's everything you need to know is there. So read carefully the guide for applicants. Uh, we have also an email address where you can uh, ask us uh, uh, to. I mean, if you have any questions, any doubts, any any. I mean, any clarifications you need to know is ngi at apre.it uh, uh, maybe my colleague nicola can uh, can put in the chat the the uh, the email address because we didn't include in the presentation uh, but uh, i mean guide for applicants plus this uh, email address to ask for uh, clarifications uh, and application form basically that's everything is there the application form is uh, is an online form uh, on uh, the f uh, uh, success platform uh, you will find the link on our website. It will be directed on the FS Success platform, and you will be able to complete the application form there. Um, I, I will speak about Sitmoto Commitment and Random Understanding because there are two different documents that uh, you will need in, uh, in, uh, in each of the different tracks. Uh, let's start with, uh, uh, with the pair teams. Uh, the first call for pair teams, so it's the first possible track, is already opened. The deadline is in the end of this month. So the deadline is 31st of January. Uh, and uh, how how does this call, uh, this track work? So uh, basically the difference between the other two tracks is in this case, uh, the applicant, so the European applicant uh, should uh, uh, before applying, I mean, to apply, should find uh, by himself or herself an institution in US and Canada. So uh, I am the applicant. I'm an applicant from Italy. I have uh, a previous collaborations maybe in uh, with a Canadian institution or within uh, a US institution. I ask to these institutions in the US or in Canada to sign a statement of commitment is, I mean, really simple page, uh, simple document uh, that uh, state that these institutions is ready to host you in case uh, you will be uh, su successful in your application. Uh, and uh, and that's all. And then, I mean, this is uh, basically, and, and then you will, you will uh, 
uh, you will uh, uh, include the name of the institution in the in the in the application, uh, and uh, uh, you will complete uh, uh, you will complete the uh, the application form. Um, that's 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 mainly the the, the difference. Is the only difference between is the only I mean specific feature that differentiate the pair teams uh, uh, um, comparing to the other two uh, two tracks. Um, I mean the the other features of the technological and scientific and scientific uh, fields uh, are the same. Uh, so that well, there were uh, um, I mean well described by Svetlana before. Uh, again, uh, this first call is the deadline is on the thirty uh, first of January, uh, twenty three and fifty nine minutes Brussels time. Uh, this is uh, uh, this is uh, the first. Uh, uh, pair teams. Uh, uh, the uh, second track is uh, uh, open ideas. Uh, the open ideas. Uh, uh, I mean, the, the 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 basic feature is that in this case, the applicant can uh, can propose their own ideas, their own project, uh, selecting a maximum three preference among the organizations that. Uh, uh, already expressed the interest to be host organization in NGI program. Uh, what uh, we have, uh, uh, what we have here is, uh, uh, I mean, again, the 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 proposal can cover uh, uh, the different NGI related technology and application topics that you will find. Uh, I mean, again, in the website, in the application form, in the guide for applicants. Uh, of course, I mean, this is more for. Uh, uh, for the host organizations, but uh, uh, I mean, those organizations that uh, you will find on the website uh, have already signed a memorandum of understanding to collaborate uh, with NGI and Richards. Uh, and uh, uh, what uh, you need to do is to uh, complete the application form. That there will be a separate application form for each track uh, and uh, to uh, present your proposals, which is open. So it's your really your. Uh, uh, research field or your uh, uh, field in your innovation uh, activity uh, and uh, to indicate uh, uh, your three favorite hosts uh, where you want to have uh, your uh, your uh, your fellowship uh, and uh, of course there will be i mean after the in the evaluation process that uh, uh, our program will fa will facilitate the match between the applicant and the host organization again applications are always uh, on F6S platform. Uh, in this case, uh, the opening date. So uh, this call is uh, uh, forthcoming. Uh, is, uh, is not already opened uh, and will open on January thirty uh, first. And uh, uh, I mean, we will have a deadline in the end of March, more or less. Uh, so. I mean, uh, other, uh, other, uh, there will be other another couple of weeks to be to be ready. Uh, but uh, again, as 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 I just said, uh, uh, we will have uh, the uh, uh, the call which is uh, which is open now, which is the first one, the the pair teams. Um, last uh, track is for challenges. Uh, the timeline will be the same for uh, open ideas uh, and challenges. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, it's not you, it's not the applicant that uh, will define uh, uh, the topic, but uh, the topic, the research topic uh, is uh, uh, predefined by the, uh, uh, by the host organization. So uh, the applicant should uh, answer, should respond to this challenge, to this topic, uh, defined by the organization in the US or in Canada. Um, one important thing that uh, is a specific feature of uh, uh, ideas and challenges, uh, the applicant needs to submit uh, a pitch deck. Uh, so a brief presentation of the project that will be uploaded uh, on, uh, on the platform. It will help to evaluate, uh, uh, to evaluate uh, the, um, the proposals. Uh, that's basically, I just like, I mean, I, I, I wanted to sum up and to recap uh, which are the main, uh, the main feature of, these, of those three tracks. Uh, I, uh, I want to just like to, to, to give you 
uh, an overview on uh, on the evaluation criteria. Uh, we, we we will have uh, five evaluation criteria. We will try to uh, we will try to uh, sort of uh, reflect what are the horizon uh, European Union uh, uh, classical evaluation criteria for this kind of proposals. Uh, so proposals will be evaluated in terms of excellence, in terms of uh, originality and technical quality, in terms of vision and impact, in terms of implementation, and in terms of uh, motivation and uh, a, uh, I mean, a score on the overall application. Uh, and uh, the application form is basically divided into different sections uh, uh, that reflect uh, those uh, uh, evaluation uh, evaluation criteria. Uh, again, the timeline is very important. I mean, it's not uh, uh, this summit is uh, is also to incentivize you to apply. I mean, uh, if uh, if we have uh, applicants from Europe uh, that want to uh, to try this uh, this opportunity, we will have a session afterwards. I mean, try to. Uh, um, also to 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 find some uh, some further motivations to apply, we will uh, listen to the experiences of uh, of previous fellows uh, in uh, in the in the previous programs. Uh, but uh, uh, again, uh, the the call for pay teams uh, is uh, open now, and the deadline will be uh, on the thirty first of January. Uh, the uh, uh, call for open ideas and the call for challenges will be we. Will uh, will be launched in the end of January and will close uh, in the end of March, more or less. Uh, the boot camp uh, will be in Rome in mid May, but we will listen uh, uh, in the in the next sessions uh, in detail about this. It's not the the last round. This is just the first round of uh, our uh, program. The second and the third round will happen in the, between the end of this year and the beginning of next year and. Uh, uh, in uh, between uh, uh, May and August, uh, between the, the the spring and the summer of 2024. Uh, for this uh, first round of calls, expeditions can start, of course, for uh, uh, pay teams uh, uh, fellows uh, as of April 2023, and uh, uh, should finish uh, before the end of this year. So this is more or less the. Uh, also, the, the the timeline of uh, of the uh, of the expeditions. Uh, I mean, we will have uh, other sessions uh, that will go in detail about uh, about it. Uh, uh, I think that's uh, that's uh, that's all for now. Uh, from my side, uh, I hope to to be more or less on time. Christina, let me know if we have questions. Uh, if we will have uh, uh, inputs from the participants, I'm ready to uh, to answer if uh, if I can. Yes, thank you very much, Matthias. Well, actually, we're running a little bit late, so maybe we do the question of and answer um, in the chat box after uh, during the session two when we talk about feedback from alumni. If that's okay with you. Um, so and now, actually, the next speaker will be uh, Francisco Rocha from SPI, who will present. Uh, um the the main information the, uh, about the host the opportunities for the host and we will also have in this session the feedback from previous hosts so uh francisco i let you the floor to present thank you thank you christina good morning and good afternoon to everyone thank you very much for letting me lead this session so as christina just mentioned uh, we will now have a session that will focus on the feedback from the hosts. And uh, we will, in this uh, panel, have the opportunity to hear the experience sharing by previous hosts from the United States. As mentioned by Svetlana, uh, NGI Enrichers builds on the previous, uh, on a previous program where uh, host organizations were already involved. And so through this session, we will be able to hear the testimonials of Ubing Song and Gil Zussman that will speak about their experience as being hosts in the United States. But first of all, I will provide a very short introduction related to the work that we NGI and Reachers have been doing concerning the involvement of hosts in the United States 
and in Canada. Um, for the session today, of course, uh, we'll have myself, I'm part of the NGI Enrichers team, working specifically with getting and involving hosts from the United States in the program. Then we'll have the opportunity to hear the testimony from Dr. Ubig Song from the University of Maryland in Baltimore country. Uh, Dr. Ubing hosted pre in the previous program fellows uh, from Europe. He has a PhD and he's an IE fellow and the ACM Distinguished Scientist, Director of the Security and Optimization for Network and Globe Laboratory. And you have some of his research activities um, presented there on the slide. Thank you very much, Dr. Rubin, for being with us and having the time to present your experience. Then we'll have also uh, Professor Gil Zussman from the Columbia University. He's a professor and vice chair of the Department of Electrical Engineering, also a member of the Data Science Institute and Computer Engineering Program, and also director of the Wireless and Mobile Networking Lab. You have also some of these uh, research fields uh, presented there on the slide. Uh, Professor Gill, thank you very much for attending this session. And we'll hear from both these speakers in just a few minutes. But first, uh, I want just to have a very few slides on some relevant aspects concerning the host. So as mentioned by Svetlan at the beginning, uh, under NGI Enrichers and for the calls that we have open and that will open as mentioned by Mattia, we uh, aim to involve a series of uh, future uh, world-class hosts, either universities, research centers, or other types of private organizations that can host potential fellows from the EU. So at this moment, we are currently trying to engage with potential organizations in the US and Canada that are interested in hosting fellows from Europe. So very shortly, who can apply for hosts? Uh, you will have on the left, some of the profiles of future hosts that we are looking for. So we are searching for universities, startups, SMEs, or other organizations that perform activities that are related with next generation internet to be hosts in the United States and receive fellows as the ones that are uh, uh, exemplified in the right side of the slide that will come through the open challenges and the open ideas calls uh, that have just been presented. So as you can see, this is quite open uh, profile that we are looking to host organizations uh, from the US and Canada. This was presented by Svetlana. So what can we retain from here? Hosts from the US and Canada have zero costs uh, in terms of receiving the fellows. So the fellows monthly allow allowance and travel and subsistence costs are fully covered by NGI Enrichers. And so this is also a, a great opportunity for US organi and Can Canadian organizations to host fellows without having any cost associated with this. All of this is covered by NGI Enrichers. So some of the benefits, as mentioned before, host organizations will be able, of course, to access top researchers, PhD and senior level people that will stay for a period from three to six months in their organizations, developing innovative and research activities. Having, as I mentioned, leading research to help in their endeavors with no cost associated, tapping into a growing network of the NGI innovators and leading researchers, of course, being part of the NGI network and the NGI enrichers network, as mentioned before, and exploring new partnerships um, with an European community of excellence, of course, of research and innovation excellence, and finally having international visibility. We have a bullet point there again on zero cost for the host. We think this is very important and of course of great advantage for potential hosts. So how can you become a host in case you are an organization based in the US or in Canada? Actually, the process is quite simple or we try to simplify it as much as possible. So the step or the main step needed to become a host is to sign a memorandum of understanding with the NGI enrichers activities. Again, uh, I would highlight this often, it is provided by the European Commission. These MOUs are also quite open for adaptation. Uh, we try to make it as simple as possible. 
so that um, the responsible entities in each host organization can easily sign this MOU. This is then signed by our coordinator, Svetlana, that has just uh, spoken at the beginning of this session. And after we have the MOU signed by both parts, you will then receive a contact from our side in terms of your thematic areas of interest, what you are looking for in terms of hosting potential fellows, what are your timelines, what would be research and innovation areas of interest to you to host these fellows. And the process would go from there uh, in a very simple matter and trying again to be as much uh, concrete and have a simplified process for the hosts to receive potential fellows. You have there my contact in case you want to know more about uh, US and Canadian hosts. Of course, we'll have a breakout session to answer questions regarding this. Uh, and of course, if we still have time in this first session to have some questions and answers concerning uh, the involvement of potential hosts, that would be okay as well. But not wasting any more time, I would give the floor to Dr. Rubin Song, please, from the University of Maryland. Uh, of course, Ubing, please feel free to share your slides in case you have them. Um, I think that would be easier from my side. Okay, so Thank now you. I have to start this. Okay, now should be fine. So here. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, good afternoon. So today I want to share my experience uh, as a uh, past uh, and the current host of NGA programs. So here, uh, sort of introducing about myself, then I will share my experience. So here, uh, I just moved to uh, University of Maryland at uh, Bartlett Mitima County. In fact, uh, in the past five years, I was at the Amarillo Aeronautical University. I hosted four NGA explorers there. So for my lab, we uh, conduct research uh, at the in inter intersection of the data science AI machine learning, cybersecurity and privacy, and the computing enabled network the physical systems. So uh, some introduction about our uh, research impact recently, I just uh, elevated to actually fellow for contribution to big data analytics and the integration of AI with the internet of things. Uh, also, ACM distinguished scientists for the uh, uh, outstanding scientific contributions. Um, also, highly cited researcher, uh, Rising Star of Science Award, also top 2% uh, scientist list by Stanford University. So also, we conduct uh, some uh, tech transfer activities. Um, uh, we have two um, patents. Uh, license to industry for commercialization. Also, our research has been featured by more than 100 uh, popular news media outlets, uh, including uh, HVE. Um, for UMBC, uh, our university is a um, yeah, perfect location. It's only uh, 45 minutes from the uh, Washington, D.C., the capital of the U.S. So here, uh, UMBC is a uh, uh, R1 uh, university only. Uh, it's like a 146 university uh, having such a title uh, in US. So now I will share my experience as a uh, NDA host. Um, in the past term, uh, three years, I hosted the four NDA explorers. Uh, they are from uh, Spain, Poland, uh, Israel, uh, two explorers from Spain, uh, one is uh, Aurora Weidel, uh, she's here uh, in uh, 2020. Uh, also in 2020, uh, Michael from Poland visited me. Um, here I want to mention, uh, Michael received the best EU, U, uh, US collaboration award from NDA Explorers Program. Uh, we published a lot jointly. Uh, Fernando from Spain visited me uh, in 2021. Ido from Israel visited me also in 2021. You can see from this picture here, this is Aurora. Here, this is Michael. So they worked um, uh, with my student and the postdoc. Uh, so here, 
this is uh, you know, a long list of my joint uh, publications with Dr. Michael, uh, published a lot from the nature, HRE, uh, transaction on human machine systems, general information and uh, telecommunication, uh, HCCC, uh, a lot. So this is you know, the paper I uh, co uh, co-authored with uh, Aurora, published in the HRE transaction on industrial applications. Also, this paper was reported by the uh, one news media outlet in, uh, I think, in Spain. So also, uh, my former India explorers, they um, commented uh, their experience uh, in LinkedIn. This is idle, uh, an amazing opportunity to work with uh, Hobin and India in, uh, uh, you know, the explorers. This is a while out uh, result at a safe mode during NGA Explorers. So it's a video. Fernando said this is an incredible opportunity for training experience to develop our blockchain with hoping and NGA, I will be online. So here, um, next. Uh, also, after I host, uh, hosted uh, four NGA Explorers, I got more from the NGA program. I received two uh, in uh, EU, uh, US EU collaborative research project funded, my part funded by the uh, National Science Foundation for uh, my collaborators at uh, uh, EU. They received the funding from the uh, India Atlantic dot EU open course. So probably I'm the only one uh, receiving funding um, from the both fourth open call and the fifth open call. For fifth open call, I collaborated with uh, Dr. Andrew uh, in Norway. Uh, for fourth open call, I collaborated with uh, Professor Zodi um, and the Professor Dinos. Uh, one is from Poland, the other is from the Cyclops. So I really enjoyed hosting the India Explorers and the collaborating uh, with you know, the, uh, the researchers from EU. I look forward to hosting uh, more India in Richards uh, this year and uh, probably next year. So, thank you. If you have any question, uh, feel free to contact me. Here is uh, my uh, uh, contact info. Thank you. Thank you very much for being, and we sure hope that uh, you will host many more fellows in the upcoming years. This is great to hear. Thank you. I will okay. give the floor now. Thank you to Professor Gill. I know Gill that you have a tight schedule, but still we have, I believe, five minutes. <coughs> Hope that's enough. Thank you. Okay. Can you see the slide? We do. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Uh, sorry, yeah, I have to go teach, but uh, so so I'll I'll go over my experience uh, hosting uh, two two visitors, one focusing on smart cities and one on power grid security. Uh, I'm, as you mentioned, in, in Columbia University. Uh, second. So, so the first visitor uh, was Levent Gorgan. You can see his picture here. He is the CEO of Kent U in France. He was here in the summer to fall to 2021. And his project and the company in general has been motivated by the idea of reducing road accidents that involve pedestrians. Uh, in particular in intersections. And they want to focus on intersections also because intersections have an important role in overall traffic flow management in urban context. Can't you develop a smart city type of applications that collect information from many sensors and try to provide them to stakeholders? And they took advantage of the fact that we are building here the NSF Power Cosmos testbed, which is a relatively large testbed that provides you know, wireless connectivity, optical, but also has a lot of cameras and situational awareness devices that can feed into their system. So, so basically we work together with Levant and his team, and this actually resulted uh, similarly to Young Ed in a follow-up project of 150K, more or less 75K Euro and 75K dollars from the NSF and GI Atlantic, also with Rutgers and Smart Santander. 
So just to get a sense of what Levent did here when he was here, so Cosmos has a lot of uh, cameras, they provide information from, or they can provide videos, but we don't want to provide non-anonymized videos because these are external companies and people in the community are very sensitive to that. So we've been working with him on anonymizing the video and then provide it into the Kentu system. And there are a couple of demos that show that, I'll try to show it very briefly here. So you don't really see the people on the streets or the cars or the license plates, but you do see the bounding boxes. So the information, this information of the bounding boxes is provided into the system by Can't You, and then they do whatever they want to do with it. For example, warn the cars that come from behind the corners about something that is happening here. You know, the first time that I saw this, I saw some people in the middle of the street I told them something is wrong. We, we don't trust your AI, but basically they showed me that there was, you know, this excavator in the middle of the road. And actually in this situation, warning a car that is coming behind the corner that something is ongoing is very useful. So this has been fed into the Kent U uh, UI. And basically you could look at the specific intersection. You could see how many cars are there, how many cars passed on red, how many was were speeding and all kinds of other statistics that are interesting for stakeholders. So that really provided them an opportunity to work in a dense urban environment that might be different from the European environment in which they're working. And I think the, the other, let me just go to the other project. So the other project, I think somebody is an unmuted in parallel to me, but uh, the other project is graph-based power system state estimation for cyber attack detection. This is very different. So one was with a startup, the other one with the traditional PhD student. So Gal Morgenstern is a PhD student in Ben Gurion University. He was here at Columbia again in summer to fall 2021. And the collaboration builds on his research in signal processing and our research in the area of power grill resilience. And specifically, we had an ongoing project with whoever is unmuted can mute, it will be helpful, uh, with the Department of Energy and with Siemens. And we leverage tools from graph signal processing uh, to design estimation methodologies that will enable better cybersecurity methods in power systems. So he came you know, from the NGI Explorer program, but interface with an ongoing program of the Department of Energy. So this project really evolved during and after his visit. Right now we are focusing on protection against graph-based full data injection attacks on power systems. And his collabor the collaboration is with his PhD advisor in Ben Gurion University, with Professor James Anderson here at Columbia, with Professor Jip Kim in Korea. So he really expanded his network during this visit. And actually a student from that same group was admitted to the PhD program at Columbia. So this again became a longer term collaboration. So just before I conclude, some, some advice to whoever is applying. So this is being recorded, so I would be very gentle, but the logistics of hosting in a US university due to various bureaucracies are becoming more and more complicated, getting these MOU signed, you know, the visas, the approvals, everything takes a lot of effort. So uh, in, in some sense, if when you apply, you can show that the project brings value to both sides and there is a potential for something bigger to come out of it, long-term collaborations and so on. This is really, I think, would be helpful for, for the process. Uh, my suggestion is to talk to potential hosts before applying. Of course, you could apply and say, I want to work on something, but if you work on something that is a good fit to both sides, I think it's usually more beneficial. Uh, things about the logistics early on, for example, moving to Manhattan is not necessarily straightforward. Uh, so planning ahead is, is worthwhile. And at the end of the day, you know, this is all about collaboration and science and research, but, you know, enjoy your visit. Gal specifically, you know, found his future wife here. So there is a lot of potential for other things that can happen. Uh, yeah, so I did my five minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Gil. That's perfect. And thank you very much for these last advices. I think this can be very, very useful for, for future hosts and also future fellows. So thank you very much for that. Christina, I don't know how we are in terms of time. Can you thank please you very guide much. us? If, uh, yes, thank you very much. If someone has still some questions about the hosts or to the uh, previous hosts, then please uh, write them into the 
question and answer chat box. And then we can move on to the next session. Okay, all the answers, all the questions so far has been answered in the chat box. So I think we can uh, move uh, to session two which will actually be about feedback from our alumni uh, fellows. So the, the fellows from the NGI Explorer program that was already previously introduced by Svetlana. So we will have two speakers for this session. Uh, firstly, Dr. Igor Kotsuba, the co-founder at iSolutions Labs, who was a former fellow uh, at, in uh, NGI Explorers, followed by a presentation from Rafael Shamir, who is a founder at Latos and also has been a, a former fellow. So Igor Kutsuba, uh, I give you the word, please. Uh. <laughs> Igor, can you hear me? Uh, yes, Christina, I can hear you. Sorry, I didn't realize that. Um, Light, uh, light in the room is, is that bad. Um, I hope you can see me uh, at least. Yeah, so thank you very much for invitation. Um, basically, I'm so happy that uh, I evolved from being uh, alumni until I'm helping to organize our consortium this uh, event. Um, I'm extremely happy that this event is uh, broader and involving Canada and um, as uh, uh, we we've seen today regarding Canadian opportunities, uh, just because considering this Ukrainian dimension, Canada and the U.S., I think that we have uh, much more opportunities now uh, for successful um, innovation and exploitation afterwards. So regarding. Uh, my trip i've been to santa clara university uh in california the us last year and uh, i'm so happy that we could invite uh, also the uh, santa clara university to be host institution hopefully uh this year they will have also uh enrichers uh from our uh, participants uh so i can just briefly tell you that uh the uh, synergy of being in the U.S. because uh, being in Europe, uh, being in Ukraine is kind of um, staying silo, and uh, we need we need this feeling. We need this feeling on the ground of uh, readiness of the products or services or um, test bed um, our innovations technologies. Uh, somewhere communicate. So the the most important thing, especially after COVID, uh, is communicating with the colleagues um, in the U.S. Uh, in Canada. Um, I think considering those integration processes, as um, Mitex presented, right, that uh, even Canada is integrating. Uh, we we are integrating together in one innovative. Um, environment and uh, this opens uh, a lot of opportunities for future enrichers uh, to visit uh, the US Canada for three six months uh, to test that their solutions and I can tell you that that opened a lot of opportunities so I visited the US after my uh, NGI Explorer many many times and uh, we continue working on some ideas um, out of the scope of, of course, of um, NGI Explorer program. Or and you will do a lot of uh, communication. I do believe um, out of uh, NGI Enrichers program, and that is uh, the beauty of this program. It's third term visit where uh, our amazing host will wait for you will help you, will give access to all the facilities, labs, will organize workshops and lectures uh, uh, for you and will give opportunity for you to present uh, your ideas and, and uh, innovations in front of uh, people who will, uh, in kind manner, um, criticize you, right? So they will show you what is good for North American market. 
And that will show and bring holistic vision of the marketability of your products. And then another special thing that uh, we are in Ukraine trying to help open uh, the opportunities for NGI enrichers to find exploitation for their ideas. So this is um, basically two things I wanted to say that um, that opportunity is crucial for your innovation and products. Uh, I do believe that this year will bring even more regarding exploitation opportunities and that will bring uh, your new product to the market. And I think that's absolutely fascinating. Thing. Thank you very much, Christina. So I just want to give the floor to the next amazing NGI Explorer. And Thank you, yeah. Igor. Thank you very much for sharing your experience <laughs> indeed. And so I would give the floor to Rafael Shamir, founder at Letos. Please, uh, Rafael, if you can. Great. I think I think Rafael is uh, is late about three four minutes. He told me that he's uh, he's joining at uh, at uh, four and five past four. So basically, in three minutes, he okay. should be so he should be he should be in. Huh? So we have time for questions exactly. now, right? And then, yeah, <laughs> very good. So, yeah. so this then, is and then. just to, yeah, to ask Mattia maybe questions now about the open call and maybe also ask uh, Igor if you have any questions, please use the chat. Maybe about the application process for the open calls or anything else. And while, while people are uh, maybe putting questions, I want to highlight one additional feedback uh, we have got from uh, the previous fellows because we discussed with many previous fellows trying to understand the lesson learned and how we should organize the, the program. And for example, precisely for this, we, fac we facilitated, so we did MOU of one page, which actually yeah, many universities said it's now e very easy to sign. So we try to, to take into account the lesson learned, okay? And the very interesting comment was that, in fact, when the host is hosting, it's not only the host, but it's also the collaborators of the host who could be involved in this exchange. For example, academia and industry, is it's a great uh, combination. And the war situation when the European host uh, wanted to uh, work with the university for four months, but then the university opened the opportunity also to work with industry and to test, uh, you know, like different solutions. So you see, it's not only like, or, or, and vice versa, when the work is done with industry and industry is working with the university, maybe university will be the host because it's maybe easier, but still the industry is involved. So what I mean is not only twin, let's say tandem collaboration, but there could be different organizations and people from the US or Canadian side, if the host want it, of course. Right. So, and the, if the fellow wants it, so it's very open, and it depends on each fellow and and each host. Uh, there was a, a question uh, which I received separately: How and when can host institution propose a challenge? Uh, so, uh, this is uh, Francisco. This is the question for you, like for the questioner, right? Uh, for the host organization with the challenge would do you want to reply or do you want me to reply while we're waiting for i can Rafael? yes i can reply yes Thank uh, you. so stefano that's a good question so after we uh, sign an mou with those institution they will receive a link with the questionnaire where they when they can propose uh, their fields of uh, experience what they are looking for and also uh, as a follow-up the challenges that they are willing to propose uh, when the call for open challenges is open, of course, on the 31st. So all hosts, after signing the MOU, will have access to a link where they can provide information on what they are searching for and the challenges that they would like to propose. Thank you, Francisco. 
So I think it's time for Raphael to join. If not, Raphael, I, I, yeah. no. Yeah. He, he wrote me he's no? in a major call. He, he wrote he's made in a major call. He will stop at six at four zero five. Okay. Are there maybe if there are other questions to wait for to wait for one or two more minutes? Yeah, there was also a call about whether it's uh, for organizations or citizens. So we answered about that, that actually the calls, uh, the fellows are individual. So the application is for individuals, but, uh, but it is a requirement that they must be employed. So either by an organization or self-employed. So maybe it's just better to clarify this. Okay. Christina, I see Rafael here, but I don't know if he's listening. He, he's yeah, he's in a major call. He wrote me that a major call with a client, and this is for him a, a major thing. So, okay, let's. He will connect right now when when he uh, he finish. Okay, he said sorry for this emergency. Let's maybe go further, and uh, we uh, we host Rafael as soon as he connects. Okay, what do you think, Matia? Okay. Okay, perfect. Just, yeah. Unless there are other questions, and then we answer this. Yeah. Questions. Uh, okay. So for the moment, no other questions. It appears. Okay. So then, uh, session. yes. Then let let's uh, let's go to session three, which is actually a focus on the NGI for Ukraine. And uh, this session is moderated by our partners, so iSolutions and IAIE. So uh, Igor and Ivan, welcome. Uh, so Igor, who you've already had the chance to hear, will now uh, also provide an introduction and overview of actually the main NGI challenges specifically for Ukraine. Uh, Igor, I give you back the floor. <laughs> Thank you, Christina. Um, yeah, so basically that's a seamless uh, start with, with the current topic, I mean, NGI enrichers in Ukraine. Because I do believe that, uh, so we'll focus on marketability now. We've got uh, in our panel um, amazing people representing different industries. Uh, we've got Alexander Yuchak who represents heavy industry, let's say uh, it's, uh, uh, industrial control systems, um, which is very uh, penetrated in all the markets. It's uh, about aviation space, um, aircrafts, uh, you know, and I do believe that NGI enrichers, when in Horizon framework itself, we've got a lot of challenges regarding applicability, marketability of our uh, innovative products, just because innovation is not we is not something we can instantly go to market with and we do everything to do that and successfully do that but still uh exploitation is a challenge so i do believe that ukraine in post war recovery uh which i do believe we we start uh this summer uh and it will have a lot of opportunities uh, for exploitation of next generation internet technologies, of collaboration with the government and yeah, yeah, supra governmental organizations in Canada, in the US, uh, European Union. So uh, let's start with uh, Alexander Yurchak. Uh, I saw he's here uh, regarding uh, industry four, industry five. Uh, and related domains and what uh, do you, Alexander, think uh, we can have as uh, exploitation um, heaven in industry four in Ukraine? Igor, do you really see Alexander? I try to call him and uh, I, I try to connect. I saw him. 
Okay. Um, Ivan, can you use how in, in the, in the program, we have? We, we, we should be start with Pavlo Kartashov. I hope now we interrupt. Uh -huh. con... Pavlo, yes, okay. I, or Pavlo, yes. Yeah. Yeah. The director okay. of the Startup so, Fund of Ukraine, very big organization. Yeah. Well, well, thing. And Pavlo, please. Yeah, Pavlo, uh, Pavlo is. Yeah, thank you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear it. Yes. So, first, first of all, I would like to thank you for inviting me to have a short speech today. Uh, just a few words about Ukrainian Startup Fund. So we are a government uh, agency which is uh, building startup ecosystem in Ukraine. So we're using uh, different uh, instruments and uh, we have a lot of different programs uh, with the main aim to promote Ukrainian uh, startup ecosystem to, uh, with the aim to assist uh, startups financially. And also we're using different smart instruments again to uh, help startups uh, to grow and to enter uh, international markets. Uh, so as for now, we have uh, four different programs. Uh, we have uh, core programs like 20, 25 and 50K uh, uh, US dollars for pre-seed and seed stage startups. Uh, but uh, one of the last uh, our programs is program of innovative vouchers. Basically, program is specially designed for startups uh, to participate in the different uh, events uh, worldwide. So initially, uh, we launched this program uh, for participation of uh, Ukrainian delegation in the Web Summit in 2021. And uh, basically, this year, it was second delegation. And uh, afterwards, we uh, actually... Uh, uh, use this program uh, to participate in different events. Uh, if we are talking about U.S. Uh, market, uh, we actually uh, covering such events uh, like uh, CES. So this year we have a second year where Ukrainian stand uh, and the Ukrainian startups were presented. Uh, and uh, also we participated in, uh, in South by Southwest in Texas. And this year we're also planning to participate again. Uh, last year we participated in TechCrunch Disrupt in, at San Francisco. And also uh, it's Startup Grind Global, uh, it's Silicon Valley. Uh, so we uh, planning this activity this year again. So uh, in addition to this, uh, we are covering Canada as well. So last year we participated in um, collision and we're planning uh, Ukrainian mission, uh, startup mission this year again. So what we have uh, as an added value for startups and for uh, our ecosystem. So first of all, this is possibility for Ukrainian uh, startups to present themselves. Uh, to investors. Actually, we are confident that uh, this is a perfect matchmaking and this is a direct opportunity, so the fastest opportunity to uh, raise uh, investment. Uh, secondly, it's good PR. So basically, if you are talking about, for example, CES, uh, Consumer Electronics Show, uh, I believe the most uh, cool PR agencies and uh, different uh, new uh, PR agencies, agencies and uh, uh, newspapers, magazines, uh, which are covering uh, tech sector. They are there. And uh, we, uh, this year we have uh, probably more than uh, 15 or 20 coolest actually uh, sources which uh, cover at Ukrainian startups. Uh, also, we have a lot of different partners. Uh, basically, these are US partners like USAID, GIST, uh, Western NAS uh, Fund, uh, CRDF, uh, which are partners of uh, our missions. And uh, as for now, uh, they are uh, financing all the uh, missions 
So uh, that is uh, actually very effective because uh, we have additional funds uh, for different activities. Um, what else? So this program, uh, as for now, we uh, already covered more than 120 startups. Uh, usually it's like 10 to 15 companies uh, presented at the event. And uh, obviously these numbers are growing. So uh, for example, uh, if we are talking about first delegation, it was like five to six companies. Now it's uh, more than 10. And I presume uh, next year we'll have like 20 companies presented. Uh, because uh, when we uh, attended uh, CES first time, we saw delegations uh, composed up to 150 uh, startups and uh, for example it was south korea so we believe we need uh, to bring more and more startups uh, to the different international events to show them and uh, to promote them um so um also, we have uh, a lot of uh, different side events. Uh, for example, uh, last our delegation uh, during uh, CES, we have uh, different meetings, we have side events. For example, during last uh, delegation, we have a meeting with executive director of uh, Select USA. Uh, we brought startups to Silicon Valley uh, funding summit. Uh, so uh, we organize meeting with investors, uh, and uh, uh, this is usual practice. Uh, during Tech Crunch Disrupt, uh, also we had a meeting with U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken. Uh, we had a meeting with the Stanford Student Association, uh, Haas School of Business, U.S. Berkeley, and uh, many many others. So we believe. Uh, in this uh, case, uh, we, we are actually trying to reach uh, Ukrainian uh, representation abroad, like uh, consulate generate or embassy, and uh, they are very helpful. So we uh, every time uh, trying to uh, arrange uh, uh, tailor-made uh, approach uh, because we believe in each particular event there are different set of uh, investors uh, or different set of stakeholders which could be very helpful so it's not about delegation but also we are trying to uh, meet uh, academia we're trying to meet universities uh, vcs uh, uh, government authorities just to understand what are potential actually interaction on this or that uh, market so Pavel, yes. Pavel, if you may uh, yeah just sorry uh, on the rights of uh, moderator so could you please explain uh what do you think just to be in time you know in five minutes uh so could you please briefly explain what do you think these opportunities i mean what are the opportunities in ukraine for successful startups because uh engine reachers is open for all horizon europe associated countries and member states what do you think what are the opportunities for startups in europe for startups in ukraine in recovery of ukraine in next generation of ukraine actually yeah it's a good question uh if you know we designed a map uh, startup maps uh, and uh, we uh, together with ministry of uh, D digital transformation together with ta ventures we designed a map uh, with the samples of successful startups in, in different industries for example health tech uh, or uh, infrastructure different industries is just like a sample uh, and uh, in addition to it, now we are operating dual use uh, program. Uh, it's uh, specially designed for uh, actually current needs. Uh, so we are looking for projects which could be used during the war and post-war uh, modernization or reconstruction period. So currently we are uh, choosing startup from five areas, uh, mainly these are health, uh, this is uh, science uh, and uh, education, this is cybersecurity, this is defense, and uh, this is infrastructure. And, uh, and ad additionally, we are now put a special uh, emphasis on Miltech, uh, 
uh, we will actually introduce uh, a new program soon so we will announce it's, it's uh, additionally but basically we are trying uh, to identify those startups which could help uh, army which could help ukraine uh, now uh, not only in defense sector but uh, also in the, all the industries so uh, we are trying to uh, attract more and more vcs uh, obviously not a, a lot of people are ready to invest in ukraine right now because of the current situation but now we're preparing our homework uh, just to identify those uh, potential stakeholders which uh, could invest uh, now at, uh, or at a, a later stage but uh, they are actually expressing interest uh, to ukraine right now yeah uh, thank you pablo thank you we, we need to go further because just we're uh, running late so uh, thank you very much and i want to say that we are extremely well, uh, Igor, but we also asked to pablo to stay with us maybe you maybe you have a question for you a bit later okay, okay Igor, please continue yeah yeah so yeah we will try to answer questions so now we want uh, i do believe that cybersecurity, security tech and healthcare health tech is crucially uh, important and uh, next generation internet is an opportunity it's a not commercial it's an innovative uh, track and I want to invite uh, Anna. Anna at Dice Solutions Labs is working on healthcare. She has intensive experience as a uh, doctor in clinical environment and a professor in academia. So, and now we are working on some uh, healthcare related projects. So, Anna, please briefly uh, introduce uh, your vision about Ukrainian opportunities and uh, in 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 the uh, NGI and other horizon framework. Uh, Anna, okay. are you here? Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. I'm uh, Anna and I'm here today um, to talk about challenges for healthcare in Ukraine. And uh, as you know, <clears throat> digital technologies are crucial for achieving public health goals and uh, we use uh, health data for the benefits of or for our citizens uh, and digital technologies can help us as healthcare professionals manage uh, our workload and uh, we get uh, greater insight into quality of life and treatment and uh, uh, data uh, can be used not just uh, uh, healthcare professionals also by researchers to develop new approaches to uh, prevention, diagnostic, and treatment of uh, conditions. And as you know, uh, chronic conditions such as cardiovascular diseases, uh, metabolic, uh, respiratory cancer, they are widespread. And uh, this, mean, uh, this means that uh, there is growing need for innovative tools to facilitate this prevention, earlier uh, diagnostics, treatment decision, and uh, different uh, treatment, different therapy um, also. Uh, however, we see that data access uh, um, is fragmented. And as I can uh, say uh, regarding our e-health uh, Ukrainian system, uh, it, should, it needs to be improved. Uh, because as we know, we have uh, lots of uh, uh, different questionnaires for early screening, but they, these uh, questionnaires, uh, questionnaires are not implemented in our e-health system. And uh, uh, as we know, to achieve goals as prevention and early diagnosis, um, electronic health uh, data system should be accessible not only for healthcare professionals, also, patients and researchers and innovators have to uh, to have access to these uh, electronic systems. Uh, for example, patients uh, need to understand for what purposes their data is being used uh, for improving care, for better outcomes in treatment of chronic diseases, for scientific researchers also, and. Uh, when we collect uh, their data, we can get a consent for using this data too. It's uh, uh, also very important. Uh, 
remote monitoring enables doctors and nurses to recognize, manage, and coordinate uh, care for the patients with chronic diseases, understand how a treatment protocol works, and decide on interventions if needed. And the aim of all of this uh, is to limit the risks uh, associated with hospital stays um, of the patient. Uh, so, um, as we see, uh, digital solutions can uh, strengthen the links between patient, healthcare, and professionals, and innovators too. Uh, so, applications used by patients and practitioners and technologies being developed for researchers, they are uh, very important. And uh, uh, remote monitoring devices, for example, they can uh, help. Uh, they uh, can help to collect more uh, uh, robust data and develop personalized interventions, facilitate follow up by health uh, care professionals. Apart from uh, management of patients, education and training of healthcare professionals uh, is also important, and not only in academic centers, um, we have to develop innovation, innovative innovation centers uh, to increase um, the need for educational activities. Uh, to summarize um, everything that I mentioned, I'd like to tell that uh, digital solutions uh, require, uh, require investments uh, in better digital in infrastructure and in modernizing care facilities. Uh, moreover, apart from challenges that we faced uh, nowadays in Ukraine due to war, damaged infrastructures making access to essential services more challenging for civilians. Uh, so uh, thank you for your attention and you're welcome for, for questions. Yeah, thank you very much, Anna. We'll answer question after your chat, I guess. Thank you, Anna. I want just to add that uh, just because of what I see in I Solutions Labs and uh, all those ratified agreements with European Commission, with European Union regarding integrating of Ukrainian healthcare into European healthcare, it's another opportunity precisely for health tech startups and giant reachers who can test bed, can pilot their solutions in Ukraine as long as European Commission is going to open huge recovery funding for Ukraine in post-war uh, period. Alexander Yurchak, we've been waiting for you for a long time. And sorry <laughs> if you've been waiting for us for a long time. So please tell yeah. us about aviation, about some super heavy industries we will be rebuilding as well. Yeah, thanks to your higher body. Uh, yeah, I'm director of Association of Industrial Automation for Ukraine. So we're leading the in uh, industry 4.0 so it's mainly about manufacturing but also it includes uh, we work in the energy infrastructure sector and uh, some other sector uh, so um today is this uh, meeting about innovation uh, ngi it's very interesting uh, talking about innovation context in ukraine it's quite uh, controversial so i mean that uh, Typically, uh, because of the war, uh, we see a drastic decreasing of uh, demand for innovation in almost uh, all sector of uh, industry 4.0. So typically, we uh, as a, well, our role as association, we are like orchestrator. You know, we try during uh, many last year, we try to build a strong innovation ecosystem. So we unite many, we know many tens, uh, hundreds of, uh, you know, um, industrial SMEs, uh, big enterprise, uh, system integrator developers, and so on. So uh, today it looks like uh, demand from end user is really, let's say, not zero, but it's really very, very low. We uh, ask it many, many end user, uh, many system integrators. So everybody confirms that, uh, well, uh, they they are not. It's not actual. They are not ready to pay, uh, and typically this is. Uh, this put uh, all our um, main actor like uh, also startup is very difficult situation because it's in fact it's very difficult to find a customer on this market and we understand that the reason is the war so what to do with this situation so we have several strategy first of all we put uh, like leaders um, in our innovation ecosystem 
system integrating developers and startups yeah because before we however we try to you know to attract many big end users because typically innovation department uh are strong uh, in ukraine in in big holding in big company today is different we we push more uh system integrating developers startup uh, try to to connect them with university really to build uh, some resilience in in, in innovative ecosystem uh what i agree with uh, pablo carta show uh, which was before me that uh, uh, there is strong demand demand rather from uh mil tech all all uh, military sector or uh, defense sector or uh, well dual use technology it's also very strong demand we we feel it and we try to to react to organize uh, as far as our association we also lead in the ukrainian cluster alliance we have access to many you know engineering machinery and, and other kind of uh, clusters so we try today to build an initiative of a uh, dual use technology it, it looks like today cluster initiative, but we think we, it will be developed to, to more, you know, uh, like organization type. Uh, so in, in this area, we, feel, we, we really we feel uh, this strong demand to try to develop it and uh, uh, to, to, to form some, uh, some, well, some innovative uh, initiation. Anyway, if I uh, summarize situation, so we, we have three main challenges. First one is how to support the key actor of innovative ecosystem, what I mentioned it about startups, developers, so on. Second one uh, about uh, how to accelerate development of uh, many uh, middle tech and defense technology, just because they are, they exist in Ukraine, many of them, uh, uh, and of course, uh, people are um, these guys are very enthusiastic about this development but in fact the problem is how to fund this development because many of them are at the level of trl five six seven but and typically guys from you know military guys they want ready to use product it, it's it takes time it's not possible to to ensure immediately uh so and second uh, and third one uh, challenge uh, how to prepare to recovery project what igor mentioned it uh, just because, of course, we all believe uh, that recovery will come uh, maybe this year. Anyway, uh, we we believe in our victory in this year. So uh, the, the, the talks about recovery project, a different demand, uh, of course, about uh, we expect that it will be new metallurgy because we, you know, our metallurgy sector, we lost, I don't know, 50% is, is destroyed. Of course, we have huge losses in energy infrastructure in many other industrial sector. So uh, everybody uh, expect on this, you know, uh, new uh, enormous funds for for recovery project. And of course, we, uh, our government declares that uh, these new projects, these new plants, you know, uh, it it should be digital and green. So of course, uh, like. Uh, community innovation community we expect that there will be place and strong place and it may be leading uh, uh, role of our innovators uh, anyway we hope for that so in this context how ngi can help us of course we are very sensible to any kind of you know international opportunity which help us to support our innovator our startups our university spin-off uh, our uh, system integrator developers so on any kind so please uh propose to ukrainian uh, company because uh, in our situation we, we even form it like you know like in communication like message save us save ukrainian innovation community just because many of us really we feel very difficult time today yeah it's it's uh we have uh, today many uh, many uh contact with uh, uh with many uh, foreign partner but it's it's not possible to uh to imagine how, what a situation is in our end user you know when when for example it's it's not safe to go to to some metallurgical plant or food plant just because of a situation so um uh, that's why we we need such such kind of support so we we welcome this initiative and of course we, we try to react in in some initiative for, for example as Igor Kutsuba just yesterday we told about a new initiative between the Ukrainian state agency and Spanish state agency cyber security I think cyber security is a good segment to 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 apply this uh, NGI initiative and of course we have several bilateral uh, collaboration we try to develop with with other countries like Czech Republic like Poland 
um, and others, and in uh, they are very specific and targeted to several segments, like the Czech Republic, we develop smart city uh, segment, or smart industry, or cybersecurity. So it's very specific to um, concrete agreement with a specific country. So in in frame of this agreement, we of course we are also ready to to develop such initiative. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alexander. Yeah, regarding cybersecurity, you know, it's so hard for security-related startups in Europe to find real cyber attack. But we are well uh, experienced, you know, like we, we've got intensive training right now on cyber uh, yeah. warfare. So that's why I do believe it's uh, quite... Uh, thank you very much, Alexander. I, yeah, uh, I just want to quote Maria Gabriel. She said, uh, we frozen arrested 200 billion Russian euros and we will relocate them to Ukraine. And one of the major track will be research and innovation, which means that European Commission will broadcast, not broadcast, the, distribute those money via projects like Next Generation Internet, like Horizon Europe. So I believe that's amazing opportunity, but those, of course, not innovation actions, that will be recovery actions which is amazing opportunity for all the projects we are doing in Ukraine and in Europe. Uh, yeah, we will have a boot camp. We are really looking forward to see many Ukrainian startups there. Uh, Ivan, can you help me with the questions? Are there some with uh, in our chat? Uh, which question? There are no questions. Uh, we... I think uh, someone was asking a question to uh -huh. Anna Fadieva, but uh, I cannot see the entire question. Maybe Yulia, if you want to put the entire question. I could question. also invite a uh, next speaker in our session, then we can discuss some suggestions. Yeah. yeah, Ivan, can you invite next, our next speaker? Yeah, is... we, have, we have another professor Podolchak, the uh, leader of our startup school from the National Polytechnic University. And there is a very prominent uh, uh, organization, not only uh, under the university community, but uh, international community. And yeah, I, I hope Nazar can explain. Yeah, Naz Nazar will represent the, the most vibrant community, basically. Uh, Tech Startup School is very well known. Thank you, Nazar. Thank you very much for invitation. It's uh, I'm really... Uh, uh, hope to, I, I want to show you our activity and how exactly we use uh, used NGI and how exactly we are, are going to use this opportunity for us. Uh, about uh, a few words about Tech Startup School. Uh, exactly, we are uh, we are community and uh, we are part of the Pol Polytechnic Na National University. At the same time, we have some additional uh, organization and ent uh, entity. For example, we have the NGO uh, with the same title, Tech Startup School, and also we have the Science Park as a part of our of our um, ecosystem. Exactly, it's uh, our ecosystem looks like that. Uh, Tech Startup School we provide in many of the educational program uh, for different focus group for, for different target groups. Yes. And we have different donors who exactly cover uh, cover our cost and uh, uh, help us to provide different educational programs and uh, improve and enhance our educational programs. And uh, exactly in different with educational programs, uh, we want to use the NGI. And uh, we have different startups who exactly need to use the NGI. And uh, for example, in uh, before the uh, white uh, white war yes we have the initiative of the digital uh, with the minister of digital um, uh, transformation to launch the 5g zone in on our location and try to to use and try uh, to try to use different startups uh, to exactly test uh, test uh, and using the zone for the testing with startups and testing with products but the world exactly broke with ideas and uh, after the war i think we exactly launched with zone and uh, start to do to do this activity with the, our ministry of Dig digital transformation and together with the our partner 
exactly a live mobile mobile operator of life yeah and next it's a scientific park city we have there are some labs r d labs the tech labino startera is our crowdfunding platform and a solution hub it's a marketplace and tech business school it's uh, for our uh, to improve our, our our knowledge of our startups and our entrepreneurs uh, also we have pre acceleration uh, programs with the different skills we have creative spark programs it's a 20 hour intensive pre acceleration program is conducted in ukraine and english with our partner and this is uh, the structure of typical our pre acceleration program how it works and also we have some acceleration program in different project uh, using the different resources and different and different projects um what else um, uh, this is uh, the blocks of our different pro programs also uh, we have this such tech acceleration uh, tech acceleration program and now it's a big prog a big project with a disco project from AIT high initiative with our partners from the Krakow University Economic University and also University Applied Applied Science from Lucerna Switzerland yes and uh, uh, now we exactly announce the next next call and uh, some statistics about this and also for the young people from 12 to 20 we right now we have the big uh, project with the USAID Goverla and uh, it's a plan to to have six courses consist of the eight lectures and eight practical session three to bed two day boot camps and also mentoring meeting and also some some uh, prototyping for the ideas and also some invest program for this ideas also right now we start to do some venture fund to, together with our california friends and also friends from the uh from the uk and we hope that this is the last entity will be very useful because people uh have our startups and startups and entrepreneurs still have the problem with the uh, money and the funds who are exactly ready to to support them and uh, uh, so i think uh, your initiative will be very useful for us also because uh, with our Korea, Korean friends, uh, we exactly start the project uh, Smart City here in, in Lviv and also in Chervonograd. And as far as you know, we need exactly to, to combine a big data and to make um, simultaneously simul 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 analysis of the big data. And this is very important to have the instruments ngi instruments for this activities so uh, uh thank you very much for your initiative and for your program and i think it will be great to cooperate with you and to using this instrument for our startups for our initiatives and for our program uh, pro, uh, projects thank you very much this is my context Thank you very much. Thank you to all the speakers and thank you Ivan and Igor for moderating. So yeah, I think this was a very insightful presentation on Ukraine and its needs. Um, so for the questions and answers, if you still have any questions to our Ukrainian speakers, please put them in the chat. Uh, I think there was one question to Anna. Anna, if you could please answer that in the chat. Anna Fadieva. And otherwise, so we would move on to the next speaker. So Rafael, uh, our former fellow. <laughs> so uh, I would give you the word now then, please, uh, Rafael. So Rafael Shamir is the founder at Letos and as previous I said, he was a former fellow uh, in NGI Explorers. So please share your experience with us. Uh, yeah, thank you, Christina, for the introduction. Uh, yeah, thank you, everyone. I'm happy to be here. Um, 
I got the intro through Svetlana to join this. And when she reached out to me, I was like immediately saying, yes, I would like to share this experience because this, uh, this program specifically, the NGI is like a much needed uh, program for the European uh, ecosystem and community in general. Uh, one of the main reasons is to have the bridge between uh, the, the American community and how uh, activities and business activities are being conducted there and to migrate that and receive and see the feedback for uh, like to have that also happen in the same way like in the European ecosystem. Um, for like for me as a quick intro, um, I'm a, an engineer by profession. I'm a self-taught neuroscientist and as the result of the NGI participation, I'm a cryptographic, a cryptographic uh, enthusiast uh, and a researcher, uh, at least hobbyist researcher in this field. Uh, I partnered with uh, the University of Oregon, so that's in Eugene. Uh, so this is a bit more than uh, in, than California, if you look at the map there. So like it's the north, north the west, the northwest coast uh, for like for this. I collaborated over a period that was close to one year, and the experience uh, in total, this is uh, where we're looking to see uh, this kind of, kind of activity collaboration with a professor uh, that's coming like from this field uh, who has like keen interest to expand his uh, uh, his like his own like his own depa departments and uh, the postdoc and uh, PhD students who are participating in uh, actively in the lab and to expose them for this kind of like collaborations uh, with researchers coming from uh, Europe or uh, in my case where uh, it was in Israel. Uh, the, the main motivation here, so we really have like kind of, kind of like have two, two main, main motivations. Uh, so one is for startups. So this is uh, where it falls like under my field and others uh, can be a researcher. Uh, for startups, then the mo main motivation here is to have a scientific validation. And some of us are, are kind of like dismissing this part and um, like other startups here, uh, not specifically in this program, but in other fields, then uh, to have this conflict as a good basis. And this is uh, where we can have this conflict establishment for a deep tech venture, which is uh, mostly what NGI is about, like with all the fields uh, related to uh, the new web and uh, the decentralized communication here. Uh, the other part is for researchers, and this is where we can have uh, this kind of like freedom to uh, kind of like explore and to have uh, kind of like new, in, new innovative ideas. Uh, so throughout my experience there, uh, I've done, I've gone from like the very basics of, uh, kind of like the architecture planning, going into the algorithmic design, and eventually the implementation software. And this was all done in the in a period like be between three to four months. So that was like very intensive, a lot of fun. Uh, and I got like to collaborate with uh, like amazing people there. They, are, they have like a, a unique, they have like a fast forward mind like thinking there. So you have to get used to it. And once you get used to it, then uh, it's hard to uh, to rewind back. But this is, uh, this was like a, a beautiful experience. And um, again, as was shared by with other previous speakers here and also by uh, my co-fellow Igor, then I'm I do happy to see it that this is uh, an expansion, like an overall expanding opportunity like in program in general uh, that goes beyond uh, the US and also like to North American regions uh, like in Canada, for example. Uh, but yeah, so this is, um, this was me. Uh, feel free to uh, forward me any questions and I'll be happy to address them. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, Raphael. Amazing. Thank you very much for sharing your experience with yeah. us. So that's very useful, I think. I, I, um, I have just a quick question to Raphael. So Raphael, you are now ba back to Israel and you are, do you continue collaboration or uh, following up some elements so or, or not uh yeah. yeah yeah i mean we from the start we have constructed the collaboration with the us node as a long term relationship so we started off with a two year uh agreement and uh i, I believe that we will expand like beyond that because um they they are hungry for collaborations and this also from like the us nodes like from the universities there 
it provides them the incentive to be like more lucrative for uh, internal US programs, uh, such as like the NSF or other NIH or uh, healthcare related funds. Uh, then this is a like a major boost for uh, these kind of like uh, activities there. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Perfect, thank you. So actually we're uh, perfect with the timing. <laughs> And our next session will be on uh, Enrich, uh, Enrich's boot camps and trainings. Uh, so this will be moderated by uh, Fahima Sadoi Ramos from Enrich Global, our partner who is in lead uh, for the boot camps. Uh, and actually, yeah, just as an introduction, so our first boot camps will take place in May uh, in Rome, in Italy. So um, Fahima, I let you the floor and. Uh, Yes, please uh, start with the presentation on the short introduction on the bootcamp. Thank you. Thank you, Christina. And thank you for all the great speakers we had today. It was really a great summit. Thank you. Um, so we're going to, as a part of Enrich Global, uh, Justine Defoe, and she's here, and i very happy to be here to give you some information about the bootcamp. Um, but also, we will focus on the bootcamp today, but I would, would like to give you an overview of what will happen before the bootcamp and after the bootcamp. Uh, before presenting the, the, the people who are going to stay with us um, later. So, for the fellows, I mean, those European researchers and innovators who are going to be selected for the NGI in Reachers. Uh, we will have in the spring 2023, a virtual kickoff, uh, introducing all the different fellows and their project to the NGI community of partners, maybe in April, the next April. Also, we will have online training sessions about different subjects like perfect pitch, how to get your visa to go to the US, or how to get your visa to go to the to Canada, and also uh, training about the platform and the tools we will put uh, uh, that you will use uh, to communicate with the partners, with the other fellows, or with the mentors. We will come back to the boot camp. The boot camps it will take place in the 15th and 16th of May, the next May, uh, in person in Italy, in Rome, exactly, at the Temple University campus. And after the boot camp, uh, you will, we will have different webinars about different other topics. Uh, one of them, very important one, is the intellectual property. Let's go on with the next slide. Please, uh, yes, we will implement also a platform uh, for the mentoring, for the community management, for the, in order for you to stay in contact before, during, and after the, the, the boot, uh, and after your expedition to the US and Canada. We will have undermined mentorship uh, at the same time, so you never be alone in this case. So uh, that's that is really a great program. Next slide, please. So today, we would like to focus on the in-person pre-departure bootcamp. And uh, I have some of the great team trainers who will be with us in Rome. Uh, Blandin uh, from Temple University, located in uh, Philadelphia. She's our yeah. expert in intercultural. And then I will keep the floor to Ranan. Uh, she's our expert in pitch. She's American and located in Paris. And also, uh, just to come back, we will have in Rome, Berna, you heard at the beginning of this summit, and Tariq, uh, Berna is from MyTech in Canada, and Tariq from University of Minnesota is going to uh, explain more about uh, uh, transformation and innovation. Uh, Bernard is going to explain more about ecosystem in the US and Canada. And today we will have also Andrea, Dr. Andrea from Switzerland to speak uh, about alternative and funding. 
So just to come back to the slide before, thank you. Um, what is boot camp? Just to explain, a boot camp, uh, in person boot camp, that means two days training sessions uh, taking place in, in, in Rome. Uh, the, the 15th of May and the 16th of May, uh, gathering all the European researchers and innovators who will be selected for this program. We want them to be prepared before to go to the US and before to go to the Canada, and we want them to follow them in order to get their, uh, their success in their expedition. Um, just to have some of them I would like to ask one question to the first uh, speaker, who would be also in Rome, Blandine Chantepicari from Temple University located in Philadelphia. I just want to ask to Blandine, why do we need to understand and to train the European researchers and innovators in the topic of intercultural uh, before their expedition to the US and Canada. Blondine? Because you will have to negotiate and, and collaborate with people from different cultures and you will make faux pas. And our training is really practical. It may not help you make no mistakes, but when you make a mistake, you will be able to kind of you know, uh, introspect and correct it. But even among ourselves in Europe, we make mistakes. And it's even more true with North America and with our, you know, Francophile Quebecois, even for French speakers, we do make mistakes. So it, our part on intercultural, really practical, will make you stand up, think of your values, think on the cultural mapping and how it can affect discussions, how it can affect building trust and long lasting relationship collaborations and uh, having little fun as well. So an additional thing I want to say, um, it's our boot camps, the way we created it, it's only in person. It's not going to be hybrid. It's to create connections. It's really going to be, you're going to be involved in your training and a lot of practices. So hopefully you will all be able to come for people selected. And uh, we're going to build those relationships. Then you're going to travel for the fellows. They're going to travel all over Canada and the US. So you won't have that in-person connections. So that's our goal. And intercultural will be part of it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Blondine. Um, I think we, uh, we have Rannan uh, McMillan from uh, our pitch uh, expert. She will be also in Rome with us. And two questions for you, Ryan. Um, what are the challenges with the pitch? Why do we need to pitch in the US and Canada? Ah, <laughs> so there are quite a few challenges with the pitch, but I think the, the biggest thing is, of course, you want to convince people and inspire them and motivate them to want to work with you whether it's with uh, a partnership or prospects and clients, uh, collaborators, employees that you want to work with. So a, a pitch is, is a kind of teaser. If you think about, uh, you know, when you go to the movies and you see the trailers for a movie and the trailer's really well done, well, you're inspired. You want to see the rest of the movie. You want to go to the movie. And sometimes the trailers are really great and the movie's really great. Sometimes the trailers are not so good. So you might rely on your word of mouth. But the idea with a great pitch is to inspire people. It's a teaser to ask you questions and learn more about what you're doing, your project, and what your intentions are. I think it's great that. Uh, Rana, how do you help European researchers and innovators to pitch? Ah, okay. How so I'm really that? excited to be part of this program. So what we're going to do in Rome is we're going to talk about you and your project, your startup, and really talk about your individual context that we can that will help us to get the content. And we're going to work in a very interactive and dynamic session uh, with concrete tools, techniques, things to really talk about getting that content so that it's solid. You're convinced by your own content. And when you're convinced by your own content, 
others are. So when we're talking about content, we're talking about, okay, uh, what's the storyboard? How are we going to structure it? What are those elements that make your project really strong? So it could be about your IP. It could be about your value proposition is already validated and you know that people already want what you have to offer. Uh, it could be about the different examples of what you've already done. There's lots of different things we need to put in that structure and storyboard. And it's different for every project. I mean, there's certain things that are always going to be part of the market, like I talked about the validation, the entry, those things are remain constant and especially your differentiation, why you instead of somebody else. So we're going to work on that. And once we have that solid content, of course, it's not all about what you say, it's about how you say it too. So we are going to work on things that are impact techniques because we know the brain does not pay attention to ordinary things. So we have to do something extraordinary to get them to pay attention to you. And then we're gonna, once we have that solid content and we have those impact techniques, then it's about the delivery, your platform presence, your posture, what kind of posture, what do you wanna create as an emotion in the room? How do you want people to see you? What image are you projecting? How are you using your body language, your voice? Are you modulating? What kind of emotion do you want to inspire from others? And then the last piece that we might get into if we have time is not only the pitch, but what happens after the pitch, which is just as important, that Q&A session where we have those conversations and they ask you questions and they're ready to go into due diligence. Wow, what's a great teaser. We all want to be in Rome, I think, to listen to you. Thank you so much, Rana. Um, maybe, um, Blondie, you wanted to add something? Yes, sorry. Uh, I can add a lot on the second day. So the first day intercultural, also about the collaboration between the agreements between Canada and the US with our specialist FIMA on that. Um, and the pitch, you're gonna have also some pitch element on, on the Tuesday. So it's really all about the pitch. We are gonna have presentation from our colleagues about the, how to manage innovation, what innovation means in North America, we can be different, and also the ecosystems. If you don't know, it's really about networking, 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 and the, the experience, how to leverage a network and keep a network, and how already existing stakeholders, ecosystems, transatlantic ecosystem in North America can be great uh, ally for, for your projects, making sure you have an impact within, uh, the, within the, the mission. So three months to six months, like that is one of the criteria for being selected. And then the stakeholders in that ecosystem will, will make sure that you can deliver on, on your premises. So, those I think I covered all the points of the Monday and the Tuesday. We are going to have networking, lunch, dinner, you know, events. You will have also the opportunity to see the, the different uh, NGI uh, consortium partners, which are great partners as well for you to 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 work with or, or collaborate in North America, but also in 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 Europe. Um, and. Uh, we can't wait to be in Rome in May, I need to say. <laughs> it has been too long. I thank love you that. so much. Yeah, thank you. Um, okay, so we are in Rome <laughs> and uh, we will continue with uh, our speaker and trainer who is going to be in Rome with us, Andrea from Switzerland. And Andrea will cover more about alternative funds um, because uh, the, the enrichers, I mean, the the, the applicants who will be accepted in the in GI in research will receive money, as the colleague said before. Uh, Andrea, what do you think um, in Switzerland we can apply for all uh, all uh, programs in order to co to stay more maybe in the US or in Canada? Yes, hello everybody. I think this is uh, the perfect match. Um, what we will present in Rome and how we will train our fellows in Rome. Um, so just saying about Switzerland, there are very competent researchers in Switzerland and it's up to you also from the US and from Canada to attract them. And uh, 
being a part of the consortium partners, we just enabled the Swiss to also get access to the money. So we have uh, um, a bunch of money for some of the researchers coming over to the US and to Canada. And I think it's really a great opportunity to attract the best researchers. So if ever you have and no good research groups in Switzerland all around, maybe the Swiss Technology Institute, ETH or EPFL, then contact them and inform them about there is funding for Swiss researchers to join. It's not just Swiss nationals, it's very often also international researcher being in Switzerland. And because of the political status of Switzerland right now, it would not be possible, but through um, NGI and Richards, it's possible. So my topic in Rome will be to talk not just about the Swiss, but enable all the fellows to think beyond just getting the three up to the six month funding. I will stimulate the thinking um, just out of the box, not just all around research, but all around funding and research. So a researcher's career, if it just they just think uh, about getting the next um, funding for could be a, a fellowship or for one of their projects. That's not going to work in a sustainable way. So we will think about uh, funding from the national, international level, from private force, uh, sources and public sources. We'll think about basic research and applied research all the way down to set up um, a startup. So we heard before from Raphael, he did the basic research and went all the way down uh, to creating a startup. And this is what we are going to talk about. Um, we will have, I think, only two hours in Rome. So that's a very short time. Usually I have two days with the fellows. I teach at uh, very many universities um, in Switzerland, but also in Europe, in Technical University of Delft, in Krakow, in many, many other European cities. So my specialty is to open up the minds for um, funding all around research and set up a research portfolio with the fellows for their next years. So uh, a researcher in our context, now NGI and Richards can maybe get a little funding, but then <laughs> get a great idea for the next 10 years ahead, maybe all the way down to a professorship, all the way down to set up a scalable company, just being a part of Enrich. Um, and um, also, to prolong the stay in the US or Canada, just as in a short term, or have a reintegration into a European group with a great opportunity for what uh, Rannan said, um, a very authentic and a very maybe intrinsically driven approach. So I'm really happy Rannan <laughs> when they already can express what they want, so we can make them really shout out loud what they want, what great idea, idea they have, and make it happen within the research community and the innovation community worldwide. So back and forward, US, Canada, and Europe. And um, yeah, just join forces without funding. I tell you, it's not going to work. <laughs> That's why we are working already 20 years on just funding all around research and are very happy to contribute to give uh, our fellows the boost. Thank you so much, uh, Andrea. I think uh, we all understand that without funding, we can't do anything. Without pitching, we can't do anything also. Without intercultural subject, we can't do anything also because we are not going to succeed in our project. We have uh, also Tarek just to come back to him with the the innovation, I mean, the, the, the management of the innovation, and Bernard about the ecosystem uh, uh, um, in, U uh, in Canada and in the US. Um, it will be really a great time. And Andrea, you, you will not have, you, you don't have really more than two days, but you're going to stay with us two days in Rome, more than that. 
So you will have time to exchange with all the fellows and partners will be there. Just to come back with what will happen after the NGI in Russia, maybe Blondie, you wanted to say something. I, I no, I, do, I think you covered everything. I just, uh, um, you know, unless we have questions, I can answer questions. But I think you covered all the main points uh, of, of the boot camp. I, uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, right, so we are all looking forward to welcoming you in Rome, the next 15 and 16 of May. So if you have any questions, please just use the, uh, the discussion and we are all here to listen to you. Thank you so much for staying with us until now uh, and to listen all of uh, the, the experts about NGI and Research Fellowship Transatlantic Program. Thank you. Thank you very much. I use my uh, position that I can open my mic and not the others, okay, while others are talking. I just would like to share a comment because, you know, like a thought which, which uh, we had already, okay, but I wanted to share with everyone. Uh, this is such a fantastic opportunity for NGI community. And it's true that I was wondering how we can share later on perhaps through Enrich Global International Association of uh, which uh, Fahima and Justine you were part of, how we can share this with large NGI community because there will be potential applicants who will not be selected, that's life, right? So how maybe, I mean, we, we already started to think about this, but perhaps we should think further I mean, when I listen, what will be presented? It's just, we just cannot keep this only for uh, fellows, you know, like, of course, of course, Blandine, you said it's not hybrid and that's clear, absolutely. But perhaps in the future, next year, okay, or, or later, perhaps something could be shared with larger NJ community, you know, like, just let's think about this and maybe this is something we, it will be very beneficial for the community as a whole, but it's absolutely exciting. And uh, yeah, we all, we all look forward uh, to, to, to this. And in addition, there will be, as you said at the beginning, Fahima, other mentorships and, you know, follow up. So this is, imagine this is just what you heard it just two days in row. So imagine for three years, how greatly, how many great opportunities there will be. Thank you very much. I thank you, Svetlana. I would like to add because you invested a lot of time in uh, setting up these networks and we are extremely thankful. And um, yeah, it's a network. So let's make it work. And also all around the European Commission funding, I was uh, as a national contact point in Switzerland, always promoting European collaborations European collaborations all around Horizon um, Europe um, are a stepping stone. And it's the only program that's really open to the world. And this stepping stone is a unique opportunity to think beyond. And in Rome, we will have another day of brainstorming. I already announced one of the workshops to <laughs> brainstorm about um, um, setting up, for example, uh, a group um, thinking about uh, writing books about what we did in the past all around the European Commission projects, uh, the, the knowledge we gathered all around project management on an international scale. I got already very many offers also from the editor, Springer, for example, to write a book about it. And I could not find peer reviewers, you know, because it's always about research and it's not about funding, for example, or it's not about pitching or it's not about uh, international uh, or intercultural competences. But there is uh, a knowledge we gathered in the last 10, 20, 30 years that during the globalization phase, and we must come together, as you said, Svetlana, and brainstorm about how about the next generation research and innovation management and all these topics around it. Very good. 
Um, so it's just uh, set up your workshop brainstorm how huh? we will have other days to, to come together and i think maybe svetlana you can give also the link where we can uh, there is one person um within our network who collects the ideas so it's like of a pre-normative work we will do there brainstorm yeah very good very good let's do this we will discuss separately great idea thank you so much everyone yes and i i hand over to fahima yeah over to christina thank yeah yeah thank you so much i don't know if we have a question i can't see them uh christina do you know who's this team yes uh well i don't think there is any more open question there was a question about the timeline of the different stages of the program so i shared the links uh for the timelines of the open calls and actually also the link uh, for the web page um, for European applicants where um, potential fellows can find actually all the information in one place. Um, but no other questions. So please, if you still have any questions, then write them down in the question and answer. But otherwise, the next stage is actually to go to the breakout rooms. Okay. So see you in the breakout room about bootcamp. So the, yes. yes, so um, yes, so we can finalize our online summit, uh, at least this part of it right now. And uh, thanks to all the speakers. Thank you for all the participants for being here. It was really, really great and uh, really informative for all, I think. Um, so for this last session of the online summit, we have three breakout rooms. This is where participants can actually uh, ask questions, interact, and also use their microphone <laughs> for a change. So, um, so there is a first room dedicated to fellows and also all questions regarding boot camps and training. So this is mostly uh, targeted at potential fellows. Uh, this is hosted by APRA and Enrich Global, and you can see the link in the chat. So uh, those who are interested in this uh, room, please uh, click on this link. A second room for US uh, and Canadian hosts hosted by SPI. So if there are American, Canadian uh, participants here who are thinking to become a host or have a question uh, towards Francisco, please join this room. And finally, uh, the third room is uh, on the subject of ambassadors and evaluators. So it will be myself and Svetlana, who will also answer your questions if you have any questions. So this is for the selected evaluators and those who are happy to promote our initiative or to collaborate with us. So I let you choose your rooms and see you in the rooms. <laughs> just just thank you very much i just before before disconnecting okay i just want first of all to thank every everyone who contributed to this event so all panelists top organizer our advisory board the european commission consortium partners really everyone gave a, a contribution for this so it's it's absolutely fantastic thank you very much uh, the next session, which is separate, as Christina said, it's it's uh, non mandatory. Let's say, feel free to join or not to join. But it will be great if you share not only a question but also your feedback or suggestions. Something we should take into account, for example. Okay, you know, like something which you feel it's it's good to share. So all this is very welcome. So it's not only questions answers. Yeah, I wanted to highlight this. And uh, yeah, so it, it will be great to hear your feedback. And we had a number of exchange in the chat. So uh, we will share the presentations after the summit. Christina wrote this. We will, uh, there is a timeline. So basically we will, yeah, you can take a look on the chat later on, yes, and, and see all, all these questions but, and answers, but we will share. We, we got all feedback already in the chat and we'll follow it. Thank you very much again, and we invite you to host, to apply as a fellow, to be our ambassador. Uh, to there is a role for everyone to make stronger transatlantic next generation internet community. Thank you very much, and see you in the separate rooms. Thank you. Thanks. See you.
Christina, so we disconnect from the Zoom, right? So yes, you can we... disconnect. Yes, please. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Just to say the links were also provided in the event, the bright reminder that you were sent today uh, 10 minutes before the session and two hours before the session. So if you quit uh, the room, you still have the links in the reminder. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yes, okay. no problem. Christina, do you want me to close the webinar or should I leave it open for some minutes? Sorry, you're muted. Yeah, sorry. I just said maybe leave for a few minutes if someone has a question how to join. Or okay. I will uh, disconnect my audio then. Thank you. Yeah.